What a year to start a college football channel as a Michigan fan. <laughs> I can only laugh. I can only laugh at the absurdity with which this season has gone on. I described it to somebody the other day as the worst, best season in the history of Michigan football. And I think that's the most accurate way in which I can describe how I feel. Because even with all of the, these allegations left and right, and we'll get into them, obviously, in this video, this team is 8-0. and They are arguably the best team in the country right now in terms of how they're performing. They may have as many as 15 or 16 or even 17 future NFL draft picks on this roster. They have a quarterback who's looking like a Heisman candidate. And yet, myself and many other Michigan fans feel a sort of Damocles hanging over this program's head each and every day as more news comes out. Well, not necessarily news every day, and we'll get into that in a minute too. Welcome to Darren Talks Ball. I, of course, am your host, Darren Graham. This is an aptly named channel where we talk college football. I would much rather be talking about actual on-the-field football right now, but as we all know, Michigan is currently under investigation by the NCAA for things that quote-unquote recruiting assistant, assistant, well, as we all know right now, Michigan's sign stealer, Connor Stallions, may or may not have done, and it's looking more and more every day like he did do things that are illegal. I want to take this moment to ask you guys once again, because I do look at the analytics on my channel and I know that about 95% of you guys are not subscribed yet. If you haven't already, and you, especially if you've already checked my videos out, please hit that subscribe button and that bell notification so you know when my videos come out. Also hit that like button because that's how this video ends up in the algorithm. That's how more eyes get on this channel and how this channel will eventually grow. And we're going to do a new thing. We are going to switch over to our new setup in terms of, I think we're going to go with this one. We tried a couple different ones as far as looks and everything. I know this is all very ancillary, right? You're here for the content, but I think this is a nice setup as far as our background and graphics. So I'm just going to get it out of the way right now. I made a video early this morning about the breaking news from Pete Thamel about the Big Ten coaches complaining to Tony Petiti and petitioning Tony Petiti to do something in season. If you want to go back and watch that video, you can. I was very angry. I was very irate about the whole thing. I've since settled down. But I want to make a clarification here first before we move on because I still think, excuse me, I still think the same way. I still believe what I said back then earlier this morning was true. I've just since calmed down. <laughs> and the thing I keep coming back to in all of this is that responsibility I talked about in previous videos. And if you haven't seen my channel before, I will just briefly go over it. I feel a great responsibility to be truthful and honest with, to, with, with you guys in terms of what I talk about in this channel and what I allege on this channel and what I claim to be true or I claim to not be true on this channel. I take a great responsibility and I think I do a pretty good job of not jumping to conclusions or speaking in a sensational way to make things sound like they're better or worse than what they really are. Things are pretty bad for Michigan right now. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I'm not going to sit here and say it's all rosy and everything is going to be okay and Harbaugh's going to get his extension and everything is just going to be rosy from here on out. But conversely, I'm also not going to sit here having gotten more information and having had the time to really delve into the facts and the conjecture of this case, which we'll get to in a minute, 
I'm also not going to sit here and say that Michigan deserves the death penalty for what they did or may or may not have done. Because I think we all know for relative certainty right now that Connor Stallions is guilty of what he did. How much culpability Harbaugh has, whether he knew or did not know, those things we'll all find out. But I'm not going to sit here right now and say that Michigan deserves a death penalty or an in-season bowl ban or that they have to cancel the remainder of this season or that they should have wins vacated or anything like that. Michigan broke some rules. Don't get me wrong. As a fan, I am utterly embarrassed and ashamed, and it seems like every day, again, I deleted my, I, I uninstalled the Twitter app on my phone for now, by the way. So you can go and follow me on Twitter. I'd still encourage it. I'll be back. But for now, I have left the cesspool behind because it is kind of a cesspool right now. But I want to clarify this at the beginning of this video. Because I do think Michigan is guilty. I do think that they will face consequences. I do think that they deserve consequences. But I'm also not going to sit here if you're an Ohio State fan or a fan of a rival program or somebody who thinks that this is a big deal. And you have every right to think that it's a massive deal, that it's a massive scandal. And you may be right. But I'm not going to sit here and I don't know what you want me to do. Like Game of Thrones style, march, march myself through the town square and that let an Ohio State fan shout, shame, shame, shame behind me. I'm not, like, we're, we're not to that point yet. So, as a college football channel that largely circles around Michigan, as mine now does, I initially started this channel as a, we're just going to cover college football on the whole. And we still do, by the way. Like, share, and subscribe. I still have a weekly episode of This Week in College Football that comes out every week. But this is basically all we've covered the, the past week. <laughs> Lost my train of thought there. <laughs> I am tired. It is late at night here. I thought I'd be kind of funny and do like a midnight drop like Pete Thamel did last night. <laughs> but as, as a college football channel, I find myself in a precarious spot because I feel like many Michigan fans out there are just wanting to are still in kind of denial at this point. And many Ohio State fans and rival fans are treating this like it's the like this is um I don't know, like like Michigan's guilty of committing war crimes here. What I am here to do, what I'm going to try to do in this video is clarify some things, show you guys the facts of the case as I know them and try to clear some things up, and try to point out what is known at this point, what is just merely speculated, and what is pure conjecture, and also clarify some falsehoods that I see spread on certain message boards and by certain journalists and reporters, and give you guys the evidence and the facts as I see it. And then I'm going to speak on what I think Michigan fans should do moving forward. So first things first, we need to get to what we actually know, because I think a lot of people out there have claimed to know more. A lot of people have jumped to conclusions based on these facts that we have. But the facts in this case, the actual facts, the things that we actually know, are pretty limited at this point. And it's funny to me, you know, my, my wife and I watch a lot of like murder mystery stuff and like true crime. This whole thing has kind of gone down like a true crime murder mystery case where like bit by bit we're putting things together. And there's a report now where Connor Stallions was here doing this. And what does that mean? And someday I feel like this is going to be a Netflix documentary. This is, that's, that's where this is going. This shit is wild. But this is what we actually know. The investigated start, investigated, <laughs> investigation stat started. When a PI firm brought information to the NCAA's attention, Connor Stallions was then reported as the person of interest. It was then found and reported that he had bought tickets to over 30 Big Ten games of Big Ten rivals in a two and a half year span, and that it also included, included potential college football playoff opponents. 
I believe there were tickets in there between uh, what was it Tennessee um maybe there there may have been some Georgia Alabama tickets in there as well. An unnamed source has since reported to have worked with stallions to scout games in person. That person also interestingly admitted that they left like halfway through one of the games because they weren't getting paid enough. I thought that was just a funny little detail. So it's pretty much proven at this point, I think, that Connor Stallions did something that violates NCAA bylaws, the NCAA bylaws around in-person scouting. But we'll get to all that in a second. Last week, it was falsely reported that the NCAA was on campus at the University of Michigan interviewing coaches and really digging deep into the whole situation. That, I'm here to say, was not true from the reporting that I've seen, from people that actually have sources within the building, within Schembechler Hall. The NCAA, what they actually did was briefed Michigan authorities, the Board of Regents and President, then met and agreed to go forward with a Jim Harbaugh extension. So take with that what take from that what you will. The NCAA seemingly briefed the Board of Regents, uh, the experts or the not the not the experts, the authorities at the University of Michigan on what they have so far and what they found in the case and what they needed going forward. And for what it sounds like, the talks were good. Michigan ab- obviously acquiesced to their requests, handed over all of what the NCAA was looking for. And from that, it sounds like Santa Ono, the university president and the board of regents, didn't see enough to keep the extension talks with Jim Harbaugh on hold. There was some false reporting around that, that the extension had been rescinded, that's since been debunked. It sounds like, according to Chris Ballas and people of the Wolverine and people with knowledge within the program, because one thing I will always say on the show, have some media literacy, check the source of where you're getting the information. These people have direct knowledge and information within the program. It sounds like Harbaugh is going to sound, sign an extension any day now. What that means going forward, I don't know. We can get into that in a minute, but I'm just here to break down what we actually know and what we don't know to kind of clear the air on some of this stuff. What we don't know regarding this case, and what I personally am really curious in finding out going forward, is if Jim Harbaugh knew, and was he directing this whole operation? That has been yet that is yet to be be seen, and has yet to been reported on. Anyone claiming that he had to have known, or that he should have known, that's all up for debate. But that's something we don't know right now. And I will say for the record, if he does know, if he did know, if, especially if he was directing this, he should be gone as Michigan's head fo- football coach. And some Michigan fans out there might not like hearing me say that, but this is a cheating, sign-stealing scandal. You broke NCAA bylaws. You acted outside of normal coaching practices. Now, some coaches do steal signs. Some coaches are known to steal signs, but they do it in legal ways. This is clearly illegal, what Connor Salians did, and you deserve the repercussions. What we also don't know is the exact extent to what to which Connor Salians went. We don't know exactly how many games he went to for sure. We know he bought tickets. We know there were some people that went to games for him. It's been rumored that there's video evidence of people in those seats that the tickets were for, but that video evidence hasn't been made public as of yet. I'd assume the NCAA has it. They were reportedly going to get it from some Big Ten programs. But we don't know. That's another thing that we just don't know. And to say that there's definitely video evidence out there of somebody recording an entire game sideline on their phone and uploading it to a Google Drive, that's all hearsay. Again, we're clearing up the facts on the case right now. We also don't know who funded the operation. And while it seems pretty evident that somebody within Schembechler Hall may have, that somebody inside Schembechler Hall may have been Stallions himself running a rogue operation. We don't know. Stallions does come from a wealthy family. That's been reported. Stallions has funded his own wild adventures throughout his life. 
he was somehow able to buy a house in Manhattan in, while he was in his 20s. He has a salary of only like 55K as reported by the university. But like I said, he comes from a wealthy family. He could have funded some of this himself, or it could have been somebody. We just don't know. To say that the University of Michigan football program directly funded this themselves is still just suspicion at this point. Nothing's been proven. We also need to know, and this is something I'm curious about, who hired the PR firm, PR, PI firm, my bad. I almost said PR firm because it, sometimes it does feel like a PR hit job, but I'm not going to go that far. I'm not going to go into full like Steve Deese territory, and I'm not judging Steve Deese. He can do whatever he wants. I'm not going to go full like this is a witch hunt. I don't, I don't know. And that's another thing I'm not going to say. That's another thing I don't know. I don't know if it is a witch hunt. Maybe it could be, maybe, but, you know, there's a lot of things out there that could be true that aren't. But we need to know who did hire the PI firm because there's some wild stuff being floated out there. I don't necessarily think it's true. I'm not going to bring in any of it up in name. I'm not going to name names, but there have been some wild accusations thrown around as to who may or may not have hired the PI firm. firm. But if it is some of the people that have been alleged, that in and of itself could be a controversy. <clears throat> Which brings us to some clarifications we also need to make regarding this case. We don't know for sure, by the way, if that was Connor Stallions on the CMU sideline the other night. It would be wild, and I would, at, frankly, at this point, with how I feel about all of this, I would just laugh if it was. And if it's revealed, if CMU comes out and says, yeah, we found out that was him, he snuck onto our sideline. Uh, Michigan, just fire him already. I don't know why you haven't already. He's still suspended on paid leave. I don't, I don't know why. I don't know what dirt he has on the program that you're worried about or whatever, but that's a pretty bad look if you don't, if it's found out to be him. But we still don't know. A lot of people are stating out there like it's pure fact at this point. The fact is... Somebody snuck on a CMU sideline and a hat and sunglasses at 8 p.m. at night and kept wearing the sunglasses all night. We also don't know if those were video <laughs> recording sunglasses. How can we know? That's not a fact as of yet. Josh Pate can tweet all he wants about it, but too many people looking at fuzzy images online and jumping to weird conclusions. But we don't know for sure. We don't. Another thing we need to clarify, which has been floated around on message board after message board, and I saw some Buckeye, um, even guys on like Buckeye Huddle were making these connections. I've been really disappointed with the Buckeye Huddle guys recently, by the way. I thought they had some journalistic integrity, and like they, they just kind of like to poke the bear at Michigan from time to time, which is all in all good fun when it comes to you know, rivalries and that kind of stuff. And I'm, I'm definitely here for that. I do that myself. See my video I made this morning. But you're taking it too far when you make connections that aren't there and you make allegations that aren't true. The Matt Weiss investigation has nothing to do with SignGate. And you can tweet about it. You can talk about it. You can make all the connections you want. The Michigan State Police, the FBI, and the Ann Arbor Police have all come out and said it has nothing to do with it. Matt Weiss wasn't out there trying to hack OSU's computers to gain knowledge and get uh, private um, practice recordings or anything like that. From what I've heard, from the rumors that I've heard at least, and I'm not going to speak directly to those rumors here, but from what I've heard, it's pretty fucking bad and gross what he was doing. But the university, as soon as they saw it, as soon as they noticed it was happening, they fired him and they reported him to the police, as they should have. So... To quote a lot of other Michigan channels, I guess, and I don't like to say this myself, but the Matt Weiss to Ohio State practice film stealing allegations are just a big nothing burger at this point. We don't know. Maybe it'll come out to be true, but at this point, multiple authorities on it. And let's be honest, the FBI has no vested interest in protecting Michigan. They've come out and said that it's not true. Another thing we need to clarify, which makes this case really interesting, because it is unprecedented, and Connor Stallions, if he's found guilty, which I think he should be, 
would be guilty of like 30 counts of this. So I don't know how the NCAA will rule in this. Another thing we need to clarify is the fact that in-person scouting is illegal. But according to NCAA bylaws, it's only a level two violation. And if you remember right, the thing that Harbaugh is also getting investigated for right now when it comes to the recruiting stuff in 2020 is also a level two violation. And that was just like a three-game suspension self-imposed by Harbaugh and the Michigan staff. It's, it'll be really interesting how the NCAA rules on that because it's not a level one violation according to their own rule book. And once again, I have to say another thing that makes this really interesting is the fact that this rule was only imposed in 1994 as a cost-cutting measure because everyone was doing this back in the day. They were sending people to other teams' sidelines, other teams' stadiums to advance scout. And the teams that couldn't afford to do it complained and got it made into a rule. And then fast forward to 2021 and the NCAA rules that doing this only leads to a minor advantage for said team that does it. Another thing we need to clarify too, and I'm going to kind of rant for a minute, especially in terms of all these coaches complaining to Tony Petiti, where were you a few years ago? And it's, it comes up in NCAA meetings all the time, by the way. Where were you a few years ago when there was a push to put microphones and speakers in the helmets? Well, I mean, the speakers, there's no microphone on the other end, but to put speakers in the helmets so that you don't have to do the signs on the sidelines and no one can steal them. Where were you when there's every opportunity to speak publicly about this and you don't, but then you speak about it and under the guise of anonymity? It's because all these coaches are also stealing signs. And that's what makes it a really, really weird foggy gray area case Connor Stallions was clearly doing something illegal but the information he was getting was no different than the information that any team gets from footage of the sidelines during any game in fact it all evidence points the fact that he was doing that as well and that was probably a bigger part of his operation let's be honest he probably spent most of his time in his office studying replays and game film to get the signs as opposed to getting information from the two or three guys he seemingly sent to games. But we'll see. Again, we'll see. So it's a little bit of... What's the word for it? I'm blanking again because it's really late. For me, it's really late. It's 9.49. I have a toddler that gets up at like 6.30 a.m. every day. Been up for a while. So it's a little hypocritical. There's the word. For a lot of these coaches to complain as much as they've complained, when it's like a known fact that Ohio State and Rutgers and who else is it? Northwestern and all of these other Big Ten teams also steal signs on the regular. Isaiah Hole reported on it the other day. One of his sources was telling him about how, or a few of his sources rather, I think, we're telling him about how there's a Sunday evening call every week between Big Ten head coaches and other members of other staffs, and they all share information, whoever's willing to trade. They like trade information. It's like kids trading Pokemon cards, apparently. <laughs> or more like old ladies spilling the tea over, you know, who, uh, I don't know. I don't know where I was going with that one. Fill it out yourself. You know what old ladies do when they get together. They bicker and stuff, right? Or old ladies bickering about Jim Harbaugh. There you go. <clears throat> Sounds like that's what they're doing to Tony Petiti the other night. But again, none of this would matter if they just put headsets in the helmets, which is what the NFL has been doing forever and what high schools around the country have been doing forever. And the NCAA doesn't do it because coaches, like these Big Ten coaches, will publicly come out and say, you know, sign stealing is bad. It's bad for the sport, this or that. And then they go to their ADs and they say, we can't, we can't put headsets in our helmets because I sign steal. I use it. And the NCAA has even ruled in the past that it's part of the game. Now, I clarify all this again just to, I'm not, clear, I'm not trying to 
recuse Michigan. For anyone who is typing in the comments, oh, you're just defending your team. I'm not. I'm embarrassed. I don't like seeing my team break the rules, which they apparently blatantly did. And I think they should get punishment. I think they should get repercussions, see some repercussions from this. But this is the like foggy gray area. What do you consider cheating? What do you not? What is out and out? Where is the line with sign stealing? Because it's almost like, and I know this analogy has been used a lot. It's almost like Michigan is the Michigan is the one guy. Everyone's breaking the speed limit, right? Everyone's doing here in Michigan. Everyone does eighty to eighty-five in a seventy. That's like if you're only doing seventy or seventy-five, you're a, you're a roadblock. It's like Michigan was the one guy on the highway that took it a little too far. They went 95, and they got caught. Ohio State and Rutgers and Purdue and Illinois, they're all doing like 80 to 85. And what do we all do, by the way, when we're on the highway and we're trying to make good time, and that one guy in his Porsche or Ferrari or whatever passes us going 95, cutting people off left to right? We complain about him, right? Oh, that's dangerous. That's so dangerous. Shouldn't be driving like that. Meanwhile, we're going 15 over. And we're not going to slow down. We don't want to slow down. So it'll be interesting to see where all this goes. Again, I clarify this just to point out, I don't know. And that's where we come to what really matters here. What really matters in this case. Because you can share fuzzy images online of who may or may not be Connor Stallions on the CMU sidelines. You can share videos of him talking to offensive coordinators and defensive coordinators on the Michigan sidelines in the Ohio State game. You can share all the info you want. You can break all the breaking news. Breaking news, coaches don't like having their signs stolen. Well, of course they don't. But what really matters here? Ultimately, is this what the NCAA finds? How they interpret their own rules? And whether or not Tony Petiti will do something? To me, those are the only three things that matter. What people say on Twitter. How many, you know, Zapruder film style images we have of Connor Stallions. You know, I don't know. Maybe maybe one game, the next thing we'll find is he... He went to uh, uh, Toledo versus Ohio State three years ago and had binoculars on the sidelines. I don't know. Whether or not that more of that stuff gets shared won't matter. It will be what the NCAA finds in its investigation, especially with the materials they took the other day, apparently, from Shen Beckler Hall, if they did. I'm pretty sure they did. How they interpret their rule, because again, all that context I just shared with you, I'm sure the NCAA is going to think about that, right? This is why we don't have the death penalty for going over the speed limit in this country. We want equal punishment for what was done. And then whether or not Tony Petiti will do anything. I don't know if Tony Petiti will. I don't think he will. I'd say I'm about 99% sure, actually. And you can go back to my video this morning about it. But that's all that really matters. And I'm not, again, I'm not defending Michigan. I'm not. I wish I didn't have to do these videos. Trust me. I would much rather be talking about J.J. McCarthy's Heisman campaign right now. But what's in the news about Michigan right now? This crap. That's where we get to what can Michigan fans do moving forward. And I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but not much. There's not much we can do right now. The narrative is set. The bulk of college football sees us as cheaters right now. More and more bad news seems to come out every day. <laughs> By the way, the thing that um, Zach Smith shared was interesting. Um, Michigan fired the guy and did the right thing. But that's the kind of stuff that will probably keep coming out too. People, The sharks have smelled the chum in the water and now they're circling. And people will find anything, they, they'll dig up anything they can find on social media like Zach Smith did. And reports, whether they're founded or unfounded, they'll tweet them. They're, they're going to engagement search, engagement mine as much as they can because they know Michigan's in the headlines right now. What's, trend, what's been trending on Twitter and Google for like the past eight days? 
Michigan scandal right there. I said earlier in my video, I look at my analytics. Most people that watch my videos lately have been people interested in the Michigan scandal. My most watched video got 11,000 views, and guess what it was on? The Michigan scandal. Michigan fans, I'm sorry, but there's not much we can do right now. I would put down my phone, remember that this none of this is really that important in the large scope of things. Look at what else is going on in the rest of the world and appreciate that we live in the United States and we have safety. And I would hope that most all of you out there have families like I do. And that football isn't the most important thing in life. That's about all we can do right now. Because whether you like it or not, Connor Stallions in the Michigan program, it looks like broke the rules. The extent to which the punishment is handed down, the level of punishment that's handed down, that is, nobody knows. And that's my last thing I have in my notes. Who knows what happens with this going forward? If I would, have, I would never have guessed a week ago that we'd be talking about a dude dressed up in CMU gear and potentially disguises <laughs> poking around the CMU sidelines. I was at that game, by the way. I was sitting behind the CMU sidelines. I may or may not have seen him. Wild shit. Wild shit. The NCAA could rule borderline death penalty. Or they could give Jim Harbaugh a suspension, slap on the wrist, a fine, and that'll be it. But I highly doubt anything in terms of punishment, in terms of resolution in this case, will be coming out anytime soon. You just got to brace yourselves, Michigan fans, for an onslaught of bad news, narrative writing, Ohio State beat reporters having a good old time with this. And just remember that the games will still be played. The kids still deserve somebody to root for them. Because in the end, that's all that really matters. I guess that's the way I'll close this out. Is the kids playing the game on the field. I said it in my video earlier today, and I'll say it here today. College football is not about me and this little YouTube channel with 200 subscribers. It's not about you. It's not about fan bases and statehoods and people that live in their respective states and areas and people that went to the schools. It's about the kids playing the game on the field. It's about their experience. J.J. McCarthy, Blake Corum, Colston Loveland, all the guys on this team had nothing to do with this. There's no way they had anything to do with this. And if you think that they did, you have no, you have no idea how a football program actually operates. They don't deserve all this scrutiny. They don't deserve to be called cheaters. They don't deserve to miss out on bowls postseason play as Michigan fans that's what we do going forward maybe that's what we do we just keep enjoying the games enjoying this this team that we have and root for them going forward because these kids will always have my my support no matter what's going on in the periphery around this program that's going to finish out this video I have uh, sleep to get um kind of forgetting what that's even like these days. Don't forget to like this video if you did like it. I don't know how many people actually will because I feel like I'm treading, I feel like I'm walking a tightrope with these ones because I don't know what to tell you guys. I'm not, I'm not really necessarily taking sides on this, and I know that, ends, that, has me ending, that has me pitted in no man's land. And it's not just like a, like, oh, man, you might get, catch some flack. This is like Battle of Verdun for you history buffs out there, no man's land. <laughs> but I'm here for it. I'm ready for it because people deserve the truth, whether they like to hear it or not. And this is just the truth on the matter from my perspective. So like the video, get it up in the algorithm, subscribe to the channel. We'll have more out next week. This will be my last video for this week. And until next time, go blue.